Hey, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Beyond. Yes, the Crate Mark II Phantom Edition, that's what we're going to call it, the Phantom Edition, has been released in the beta and ready to play and for commanders to fly. So get yourself over to your friendly starport. And it says, with a spacious cargo hold and a relatively generous quantity of hard points, the Crate Phantom is a versatile ship suited to a range of roles. It has enough firepower to hold its own against larger targets, blah, 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 blah. Office eight internal components, lots of firepower, and like its sister ship, it's fast and light. Brilliant, what's it gonna be doing? I reckon it's a cool exploration ship. Okay, more streamlined than the Crate Mark II, and it keeps those hard points with two large hard points. It can really throw the fire down. I think, personally, between the two ships, the Mamba and the Crate Phantom, the Crate Phantom is the ship most people are gonna go for because of its increased range. It is gonna be a bit like, you know, the Asp Scout, though. Who knows? What's it cost? Well, I'll tell you what it costs. It costs, at Founders, 32 million. So expect that to be a little bit more wherever else you go and find it. Top speed is knocking in at 256 meters per second with a boost speed of 358. An FSD range with a stock FSD range, totally unladen, 9.76 with laden 8.23. But you can be able to engineer the hell out of that, right? Let's go into some more stats. What about armor? Armor is at 324, shields at 260, and the hull mass, 270 tons. So it's gonna be able to jump quite far. What about shields? Well, class six shields. So it can take a bit of a hammering. Class five fuel tank. Not bad, not bad at all. Better than what the Mamba had has to say. Class seven on the power plant. Straight off the bat, you've got 20 megajoules. Class six, thrust. Class five, FSD. We reckon it should be able to be engineered up to about 60 plus light years. And for a ship of that size, it's a good alternative to the Ask Explorer, Asp Explorer and a good alternative to the Asp Scout. So let's get this bought, shall we? So that was um, 30 odd million. But it's the beta, we don't care. Let's see what it's all about. So straight off the bat, let's have a quick look at outfitting. I can see there's some changes already in the cockpit area. You see the cockpit hasn't got the two bubbles either side to host the two multi-crew points, but it does have an extra multi-crew seat. We've got two empty large hard points and it comes with the standard small pulse lasers in the medium bays. Now, I'm just going to have a bit of a play around here. You know, I like the multi cannons either side of the cockpit. I, need to, I like to turn my head slightly and see those multi cannons whirring away and dealing out their crate phantomry like death against my enemies. I like them either side. And a lot of people have said that. One thing they're not too sure about the Mamba, the Mamba, you can't see the weapons out the cockpit. People want to see them. People want to see the machinery working. They want to see. They want to see death being dealt either side of the cockpit when they turn their heads. And as a result, the Crate Phantom delivers much like the Crate Mark II delivered. Really cool aspect. I'm going to lay some beam lasers in there as well. Um, on the other slots. On the large hard, large hard points. Um, for anything else, because I like beam lasers. You know, when you've totally got to kill everything in front of you, beam lasers. Of course, if you're going to use this as an exploration vessel, then you would cut this down quite considerably to just have enough to keep people away while you run for the hills. If you're using it for exploration, you're going to want lighter weapons, much lighter weapons. So as you can see from the stats below, you know, we've got pretty good power, 20 megawatts with the standard power bay. And that's not bad. Um, let's look in, let's get some of this engineered up. So we've got a 7E power plant like we stated and for that we're getting 20 megawatts. Let's scroll all the way down to the A-rated one and let's A-rate this up. Let's buy it up, come on, here we go. Straight off, that's up to 
30 and change. So you're going to be able to run whatever you want with 30 megawatts, I would have imagined. You know, so it's turning out to be quite versatile. I take all the things back I said in my other video. That was the Crate Phantom. What's the point? Well, I can see the point now. It's turning out to be a cool ship. So we're going to go for a D on life support because, hey, you know, it's life support. Unless I'm going right out into the black, I'm not going to need anything sort of like that. And if my canopy does go out in the black, well, well you're stuffed. So yeah, power distributor as well. I'm going to go for a 7A on that. Just so we can lay down all that power. And there we go. So we've got a 5A frame shift drive. Frame shift drive is already up without any engineering or any FSD boosters to 22.85. And with all the stuff that I've got in there. So I am going to put a frame shift drive booster, a 5H frame shift drive booster in that class 5 slot right because i want it to be able to jump now you can always change that if you can use this for trading as well like but i don't really know why you would uh, you need to have some cargo capacity and you've got the class three slots there for that anyway and another class five slot surface scanners if you go and exploring i think a detailed surface scanner is for you um, and that will go nicely in that class two slot right at the bottom freeing up that class three slot for either more cargo an srv uh, whatever you want to go and do with it. So, so far with the FSD, we're up to 33 and change light years. Uh, that FSD booster has given us a hell of a lot of additions. Now, if we were going to go through and derate all of this, then of course we'd be on to a bigger winner. And I reckon without any, any engineering, derate everything, you're going to be knocking on with an FSD booster around 40 light years which is not too shabby get yourself over to felicity and you can see that knocking up to at least 60 i would have imagined so what's it look like on the outside well look at that it's got a lovely color scheme like the asp scout is taking the traditional engines of its sister ship and replaced it with a solid one bar a lot of people say it looks like an led well, yes, but I think those are cooler engines. I'm all for cooler engines. The nice red and grey aspect of this ship is lending itself to that sort of stealthy vibe that could be, you know, indicative of the, of the name Phantom. Let's look at that cockpit right in the middle. Slightly different shape because there's no bulbous on either side and you know the, the guns come down, but it's red inside as well. Look at that. How cool is that? As we go through some of the other aspects and views, you can see they've actually decorated the inside of the cockpit. Not at all like the old Crate Phantom. It does indeed look like they have, in, like I said, decorated the inside of the old Crate Phantom. It's nice. It's red. It likes to come straight out of habitat. Whereas the old Crate Mark II, there was extension leads hanging about everywhere, you know. It's smaller. It's compact. You've got the second seat just behind and to the right of the pilot looking around the back he's got this lovely red paneling whereas before it was you know quite i think unfinished and bare metal but one thing i've noticed as well is by scanning around there seems to be what looks like a rubik's cube in that little shelf you can't really see too much of it strange isn't it what is that a few little things in the shelves in the racks they're all marked crate mark two as well like you know so but uh, god knows what that is I'm going to say it's a Rubik's Cube. Anyway, you've got like coffee holders, could be coffee holders, could be something else. I'm going to go with coffee holders. And you've got other lockers around inside the cockpit area. Going for a bit of a wider angle on that as well. Lots of panels, lots of detailing, like what we saw with a Mamba, a very finished ship, a very artistically designed model. So... The cockpit is a nice cockpit, it's a nice place to be. I think it's going to be a very good alternative for all the people out there who run Asp Explorers, especially me. I think I'm going to buy one and I think I'm going to engineer the hell out of it and use that because it looks cooler than the Asp. I have to say, the Asp is a bit like an old dinner plate. Very easy to, to hit. You know, this I think it's got the aggressive looks of the Crate Phantom of the Crate Mark II, and now with the Phantom, you've got a nice interior. Plus, you've got multi-crew if you want it. 
So looking around the cockpit, all the wires and extension leads, and there's a few wires hanging about, you know, have all been tucked away nicely behind panelling. Now, it's not all about panelling though, is it? That second seat for your multi-crew people is in a pretty good position. They've got good visibility as well. And you've got the, what people said, oh, it's the computer from the Millennium Falcon right at the back. Well, whatever, could be a big coffee machine, who knows? So from the outside, you've got those quintessential Quate Phantom looks, right? That they've got right from its big sister. Again, we've mentioned that, you know, the, the cockpit's been cut down. But other than that, you look at that, you think, it's a crate. It's a crate, right? Then you say, oh yeah, it's a crate phantom because of the cockpit and the engines at the back. So some are saying, oh, you know, FDEV, it's lazy, it's lazy. No, it's not lazy at all. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's a ship for a purpose. They say it is multi-role. Okay, it's a multi-role ship, and that's exactly what it is. And here we are seeing it in its native environment. Am I going to get all Richard Attenborough around you, or David Attenborough around you? Um, but look, there it is. Um, it looks nice. It looks nice in space. With all the ship kits and other things, you're going to be able to get to it. Hey, you know, it's going to look great. Now you can see the lasers. i got the pulse lasers in this configuration either side. You'll be able to see those flash and lay down their fiery death against all your adversaries. In all, I'm very impressed with this model. Um, it's maneuverable, it's quick, good boost speed, decent um, FSD range, you know, you can be able to jump everywhere with it. And you can see in this model, in this shot, I've got the beam lasers at the top and the guns either side. But all in all, you know, it is it is a ship to behold. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to having this as opposed to the original Crate Mark II. I love the Crate Mark II. I love that retro vibe. This, however, I really am enjoying. Really, really am enjoying. It looks nice. And like I say, it's got all the stats to go with it. Maneuverability, very good. Speed, very good. Hard points, I think adequate. Too large, too medium. Why would you need anything else? It's an explorer. But, you know, what can I say? There you go. Those are my views on the Crate Phantom. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Ricardo. Take this as you will. It's still in beta. But let's face it, we're getting that close to the end of the game now. It's going to be in production before you know it. At least the landing gear works on this one as well, because it didn't work on the Mamba. It can go up and down. No dramas at all. Let me know what you think. If you've already done so, like and subscribe. Put your comments in the comments section. Keep it clean because we're all good friends. And I'll see you soon. And look out for more videos in the series.